That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. I'm Shane Ramey. You're listening to That Sober Guy podcast, and we help people stay sober. If it's your first time listening, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. If you're looking to cut back or quit your drinking habits... We have one of the best 30-day alcohol-free challenges out there. It's helped hundreds of men all over the country quit drinking alcohol, uh, become better fathers, better leaders, better husbands, uh, better entrepreneurs, all kinds of good stuff. And uh, you can sign up today. You can check out all of our other podcasts and our resources by going to thatsoberguy.com. And then be sure to follow us on Instagram at thatsoberguy.com. And another quick note, I'm starting to upload some more of the podcast in the video format on YouTube. So if you want to go over to our YouTube channel, um, you can find us on there. I think that's also in the profile, the link tree on uh, that, or at that Sober Guy podcast on Instagram. I don't know why, but for some reason, I feel like saying right now in this moment before I introduce Joel today, um, I've still never heard anybody say... My habitual drinking habits have really improved my life. (laughs) And I'm still waiting for the day to hear that. And I have yet to hear it. So I'm going to keep rolling alcohol free and uh, doing my best. And I I hope you all do the same out there. Um, Excited to uh, to have our guest today, uh, Mr. Joel Staley. And uh, he's been on the podcast uh, once or twice before, I think. And it's great to have him back. Uh, Joel, how are you, man? Fantastic, brother. Thanks for having me, Shane. Oh, yeah. Always. Always a pleasure, dude. Always enjoy chatting with you. Um, You got a lot of stuff going on and uh, recently just hit one year sober, baby. Good job, man. How's that going? It's been a a real game changer. And so that was actually a couple months ago. I'm now just over 14 months. And honestly, I don't see myself breaking it anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, man. That's a that's a huge uh, accomplishment. I know it's not easy. Uh, even when we talk, I don't remember when it was. We talked probably six months ago, maybe roughly. And uh, I remember um, you were kind of in in the middle of it, and you were you were debating, like, uh, or maybe not, maybe debating is the wrong word, but you were just kind of considering. I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to go back or not. I'm just kind of doing my thing right now and taking it the old one day at a time thing. And dude, you hit a year, and dude, that's <laughs> awesome, man. No going back. Well, I have one of those personality <laughs> types, Shane, the, the entrepreneurial. I just don't like to be told what to do. And what's yeah. kind of crazy is that even when I tell myself not to do something, I don't like taking orders for myself. It's, dude, it's weird. It's like <laughs> it's almost like my psyche has been cut in half. And I didn't know this was a thing. It's actually pretty common amongst a certain type of people. But so when I tell myself I can't drink, there's that constant just – negotiation in my head of like, dude, what do you mean you can't drink? You can't just go have one drink. You yeah, committed to a yeah. year. Yeah. I just know from doing a lot of research and watching videos from people that have done a dry year before and people uh, talking to people on the, on the streets that have done a yeah. dry year, everyone who goes back to drinking, even if it's subtly at first, always seems to regret it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, agree, boy. man. Always. Yeah. I've never, I, I haven't really met anyone either. It was like, yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really happy that I went back, went back to my old ways and habits. You know, I there's just not a lot of positivity. I don't, I don't really see in, uh, in that decision. Um, yeah. Crazy, man. I didn't, uh, I just realized I didn't, uh, I didn't um, give you a proper info, mention the podcast, you're a fitness coach. Just get, like for those maybe who didn't catch uh, you on the first one, give us a quick little rundown of, of, of what you do, Joel. Yeah, man, I appreciate that. So I'm big into self-development before the, the not drinking aspect. Fitness has always been the low-hanging fruit that I, I think guys can attack. So I'm a fat loss coach primarily for uh, husbands and, and men's and fathers you know, that have a lot yeah. on their plate and don't necessarily want to meal prep six meals a day or tediously track calories and macros just to yeah. get into shape. Uh, so fitness coach, I've been doing that for about five or six years. And then, yeah, also I have a, a podcast called Winners Win, which is just, again, in the self-development category. Nice. Love it, man. Hey, I'm getting some some popping and some um, weird little background stuff on your audio track. Do you know if, can you see if it's maybe like a loose, uh, cable or something, or I don't know. It's strange. 
You know what? Is this any different? Uh, it's still doing it. Weird. I've never connected to what you got me on here. Let me see if I hit this gear. Did you open in uh, in Google? In Chrome? I wonder if that's could be it. Man, dude, I've been having the worst luck with uh, with tech stuff the last couple days. Like, I had some issues How about, yesterday. Is this any better? Uh, yeah, that, that seems better. Okay, cool. Okay. Perfect, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, worse, like, t audio stuff, man, drives me crazy sometimes. But, okay, looks like we got it figured out. All good. We'll keep rolling. Um, so, the Winners Win podcast, um, I love that, too, because, like, that taking that winning mindset, and I wanted to ask you this, too, like, the winner's mindset isn't about, well, I'm asking you this, I guess. Is the winner's mindset just about always winning or is it like finding the wins in even like the times that we fail or like the challenges and stuff too? Because I feel like it's kind of like a whole package, you know, and I'm, like in everything that we do in life. Yeah, it's funny. When, when you think about winning, you think, all right, I have a ripped six pack. I have hundreds of thousands of dollars in my bank account, smoking hot wife. Everyone treats me like a king. I'm just crushing it. That's been the biggest thing about not drinking for me is even when it. So I just had a client dump me right before this call. It's like, man, really? this was supposed to be a client that was around for a long time and they canceled one month in and it's just like oh, wow. stuff still happens. But at the end of the day, I, if I can rest my head on the pillow at the end of the night and know that, dude, I remember waking up in the morning every morning with this like whiskey on my breath and, and constantly saying I was going to quit and not being able to. So even if shit's going to happen, no matter what, that's just kind of yeah. life. I think we're yeah. here to like evolve and, and learn from those things. And uh, there's actually been a quote that's been in my head quite a bit lately. And it's like, I don't pray that God makes my life easy, but I, I pray that he makes me strong enough to be able to bear whatever gets thrown at me. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Winning is essentially being able to roll with the punches, but focusing on what you can control about your, your own life. And like I was saying, being able to go to bed at night and wake up in the morning, not having that stale, uh, mm. leftover maker's mark taste in my in my throat knowing like oh dude i did it again fuck i'm stuck in this perpetual loop yeah. that's winning to me and whether like, i can't control if a client backs out or if uh something at work happens or something happens over here all i can control is what i'm doing and what i'm not doing yeah and so just being proud of the decisions you're making that's winning in my opinion oh yeah that's good dude that's a uh, well, well put man there's like life's gonna throw crazy stuff at us sometimes and um, <clears throat> I think having that attitude of uh, of winning in a sense like helps to kind of keep us in that same space of being grateful just for you know where we're at, what we do have, the family. There's lots of things that we can um, show that gratitude for because it's easy to point out the negative stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, man. So let let's uh, l let's talk a little bit about um, about fitness now, man. Like how big is that played into? I mean just being able to um, stay away from the alcohol, like stay on somewhat of a healthy, uh, balanced plan. I know there's a lot of dudes out there who, um, including myself back in the day when I was still drinking, like it was hard to be healthy because even when I would try to be, I would still revert back to the alcohol on the weekend. And then it was like, almost like you said, that habitual cycle. So like, Speak to the dudes out there who are looking for some of that, maybe that fitness, health and wellness, but maybe they're kind of stuck still drinking, even if it's just on the weekends or something. Yeah. So I remember the first time I heard the term escapism and it just hit me and it wasn't even in context to drinking. I was listening to some book, uh, trying to bond with my wife called like something about crawdads or something. And the lady said she had an affair <laughs> and it was a, a form of escapism. And as soon as I heard the term escapism for the first time, I just, I remember it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, dude, that's my drinking, man. That's, that's why at five o'clock every day, as soon as the kids come home and as soon as I'm done with work, it's like, all right, first thing is pour whiskey as I'm making the dinner and then just kind of sip on that all throughout the night. And then it's kind of like I'm fast forwarding throughout the night till I can wake up and start working again. And, uh, 
the escapism is, it almost seems to be a part of human nature and there's really no uh, getting around it. You should practice mindfulness and meditation and being present in the moment. That's, that's the ideal, what you should strive for. Yeah. But in the meantime, I still, at some point, I'm just like, dude, there's too much going on right now. I need to escape. And instead of doing it in a couple of tumblers full of, uh, I don't know, basil Hayden or, or whatever it is, uh, man, I just like to get out to the gym and I call yeah. it my iron therapy go bang some weights around, you leave, you get the endorphins pumping. And instead of waking up like hungover, like you do, you feel like a million bucks afterwards. Yeah. So that's, it's been a great replacement for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, something to do, something positive to do, um, getting some of that energy, some of that, um, even if you're having any anxiety or a rough day, like, um, my, I, so today I'll have, um, a little shoulder workout and then I'll incorporate some, uh, some heavy bag conditioning on uh, it's just a little boxing just to roll with it, dude. And that's like, I always look forward to Thursdays cause that's like my day where I can get some cardio in and man, it's a, and I just, I do, I feel so good afterwards. I feel, I feel just like complete almost, you know? Um, all right. I have a selfish question for you. Uh, cause I know that you're into fasting. Um, so fasting for, I'm fasting like a, uh, so from 8 p.m. to noon, like the following day, right? Um, is that is that a long-term um, uh, solution, I guess, to like trimming up, re reducing fat and becoming um, cut, I guess, a little more in shape, a little more looking good, feeling good? Um, I know you're a proponent of fasting. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, big proponent of fasting. I typically enjoy the longer fast, so like 36 mm. hour plus. I mean, 24 is cool too, but um, 36 I'm is when you that, got, get into I'm ketosis. Not clicking again. Start... Dude, I don't know what it is, man. It all of a sudden just so, started. Man. Dude, what is that? <clears throat> I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's see. I got a, Maybe... I got a completely different mic set up from... from before. It was my computer mic at first. Now it's this third party mic, so I don't feel like it's on my end. Yeah, it was it was going so good. Let's see here. Huh. Still clicking? Go ahead, to, uh go talk again. So I'm uh -huh. I'm a proponent of the longer fasts. So like twenty four yeah. hours still clicking yeah it's still clicking like pretty bad um let me try something real quick I'll try to switch you to this okay. other channel okay See if that helped. Anything? Test, test, test. Am I clicking? Am okay. I clicking? You're good. <laughs> check one, check two. <laughs> uh, so, okay, it stopped now. I don't know, dude. That's so weird. Okay. So we're talking about fasting. and uh, Yeah, so I'm typically a proponent of the longer fasts. I've found that, honestly, the first 24 hours of any fast is by far the toughest and there's the least benefits to it. Mm. So let's say I start a fast on Sunday night. It's six o'clock after dinner. Then typically six o'clock Monday night is going to be the toughest point. You're 24 hours in, you want to eat. It's nighttime, willpower's low. But if you can push it and go to bed Monday night and wake up Tuesday morning at about 36 hours in, dude, mm. you could fast essentially forever. Your body's really? a fat burning machine. There's all these health benefits, anti-cancer benefits. And so I actually did a seven day fast a couple months ago with a buddy. And mm -hmm. it's always that first 24 hours is the toughest. And people think you're gonna lose muscle or you're gonna slow your metabolism down. It's all yeah. nonsense, man. It, it really does seem to be, especially for guys with a busy schedule, the, uh, the key to being mm -hmm. able to burn fat very quickly. 
So how, so two questions. Do you use any like salts? Like, a, like I, I'll, I'll use relight, like to help with just, you know, energy or whatever, but also how do you still lift or do an intense workout if you're fasting? Cause sometimes I feel sick or whatever, you know, or not just, I just don't feel up to, up to par. Yeah, definitely use electrolytes. So magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So whatever you're using sounds like it's the combination of the three. I yeah. use one called Ultima. It's a good, uh, it's a good one. There's a bunch of them out there. But essentially, man, I found that it takes a couple of days of fasting or a couple times of fasting for your body to make the correlation that it doesn't need to use stored carbs for workouts, but it can actually mm. tap into body fat instead. So we typically tell our clients it takes about a week or so and to still hit their workouts, but go probably about 75, 80% of their normal intensity. And right. something about that week in, uh, th their body makes that switch to burning fat for fuel and workouts are not only, I mean, as good as they've ever been, but actually better. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> you're just adjusting ba basically. You're, you're giving your body a little bit of time to adjust to that and then um, once you kind of fight through that that first week or so, you can you tend to get on a, a more regular schedule and feel a little more normal. Okay, good good stuff, dude. Um, yeah, because if you think about it, everybody fasts. That's what breakfast is: break fast. If you're sleeping for mm. six hours a night, you're fasting for six hours. So instead of I'm either tracking calories or I'm not, or I'm either eating carbs or I'm not or you know, carnivore diet, I'm just eating meat, yeah. or I'm eating other stuff, or most diets are very black and white, almost like a light switch, you're either on or off. Fasting is sleeping. So what's nice is if you want to, say, go to Mexico in two months, you can ramp that dial up to an eight or nine and start cranking out these longer fasts where once you get into maintenance mode, you can dial that back down to a two or three and just skip breakfast a couple times a week or whatever it is. So it's really malleable and customizable for people Got who want to not only drop body fat quickly, but also be able to maintain it without giving up all the foods that they actually, you know, like to eat. Yeah. So like a longer fast then would be like a 24 hour fast, like, or, or 30, I think you said 36 even, right? That seems like. Long. Yeah. So 24, I'm <laughs> typically doing 20 to 24 hour fast. I generally like to wake up, get a workout in work all day. And then what I said earlier, I'd have a whiskey at five o'clock. Now it's like, all right, cool. I can, um, uh, eat with the family from five, cut it off by yeah. eight, eight thirty, whatever. And then just repeat that. So that's very easy for maintenance and I can eat yeah. essentially whatever I want as much as I want. Now, if you were trying to lose 40 pounds or what have you, really getting into that second and even third day doing 48 hour fast and 72 hour fast. Not mm. only are you going to feel like a million bucks once you make it to that second day, but the fat just literally melts off and there's mm. all tons of, uh, all kinds of health benefits associated with it. If you do like protein shake in between, is that cheating? Is that while you're specific? fasting? Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll, uh, <laughs> negate a lot of the benefits. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. So like strictly water, just like keeping it, like that's it. I'll, yeah, it's, I love... it's essentially like turning your digestive system off. Our digestive mm. systems weren't really meant to run 24 seven and constantly be like, it's like having your oven on 24 yeah. seven. Eventually something's gonna break. It's not gonna work as well. Yeah, Fasting is essentially just giving your digestive system a break and allowing it to repair itself mm. to, um, <sighs> Yeah. And then you get this uptick of energy because a lot of people don't realize that 30% of your energy, um, comes from calories that you eat. Oh, got it. So, or, or burning <clears throat> calories or digesting food. So if you yeah. eat 30% of your energy is automatically allocated to, uh, burning that food. Mm. So when you're fasting, you get this automatic uptick of about 30% extra energy. So you don't need as much coffee. You don't need like the bang energy drinks and all that stuff. You yeah. just naturally have more energy throughout the day. So you can play with oh. your kids at the end of a long work day and do whatever you want with it. That's crazy, man. Yeah. There's so, there's so much to it, but it's simple at the same time. It, it, I, it seems like, um, what I like to, what you mentioned too, for those out there listening, if you're interested in working with Joel or you just want some more info, we'll put all his info of course, in the show notes for you. But <clears throat> excuse me, you mentioned, <clears throat> you mentioned that, 
you know, these plans and different um, clients that you work with, it's all customizable because everyone's a little bit different. Like at the end of the day, everyone has a little bit different goals. So you're kind of able to take um, someone who may have a specific goal in mind and kind of create a program based around their lifestyle, based around their schedule, based around their goals. Is that kind of how it works? 100%. So that's the problem with a lot of diets is they're very cookie cutter. So I'll have people reach out to me and they're like, well, I travel a lot. I got to meet clients for lunch or yeah. you know, I'm a dad. I want to have dinner with my family. I don't want to be fasting through that. We have a saying in the Shed Fat Fast program, which is we work the fasting around your life, not your life around your fasting. Mm. So it's very easy. We just work in the fasting on days that you need to be extra productive or we're not going to have you miss family dinners or, or uh, yeah. vacations or, or lunches with clients. Those are like the non-negotiables. So we just work it around that. And you mentioned like a guide. I did put together a, a free guide. I call it my most incredible free gift ever, where it, it's legitimately everything you could ever need to know about fasting, free copy of my book, supplement guide that's fasting friendly. If anyone just, I don't know, adds me on Instagram or what have you, I'll, I'll gladly send it over to them. Awesome, man. Yeah. And like I said, we'll, we'll put all your contact stuff in the show notes. Um, so <clears throat> man, my voice, man, these more morning interviews I'm, I'm learning, man, my voice is, I'm already raspy as it is, but I'm like, so like, like coughing. I'm having to hit the cough button over here and stuff. Um, <laughs> dude, I want to talk a little bit about like this, you know, 14 months now sober, like you know, alcohol free, whatever, however you want to frame it up. Like what, what has worked for you well for, you know, the dudes out there listening who are like, man, you know, a year, like I've really strived to like, there's a lot of guys who want to get to a year. Cause I've heard that often, you know, and it's, it's challenging. Like, what are some of the things that have worked for you? What are some of the things that haven't? And then like, what, what tips would you give to dudes out there listening? Dude, the main thing has been my daughter, Kennedy. She's five now. And even so, I still wasn't sure if I was going to drink after my dry year. And she was a lot of the reason I did this in the first place is she would ask me if I was drinking beer, even if I was drinking mm. like a mineral water. And uh, I was just, she was always watching me. She's like a little mini me. But yeah. she has started, um, she, if we're walking through the grocery store and there's wine, she'll be like, ew, dad, beer. <laughs> And she'll be like, boozers are losers. And I'm like, yeah, if you drink, you stink. And dude, she's been like my biggest proponent. That's funny. And I can just tell that instead of normalizing, constantly poisoning yourself, <laughs> you know, because we were going to family <laughs> parties and everyone's always drinking. And so it, it gets normalized at a certain point. It does. Instead, yeah. I can look back and say everything else equal. My daughter looks at beer and she's like, gross. So yeah. I, wow. that alone has been a fuel for me of, uh, like there's no party that I feel like I need to drink at or any social engagement that I feel enough peer pressure that I want her to see me drinking. And then I have to be like, uh, oh yeah, well, it's not that bad girl. You know, drinking, it doesn't really mean you stink every once in a while. It's, it's cool. I love when she says that shit. Cause it yeah. lets me know that I'm doing something right. <laughs> totally, man. Oh, that's funny, dude. I like the little jokes, you know, too. <laughs> I've never heard that boozers are losers, bro. <laughs> So I always say, if you booze, you lose. If you drink, you stink. <laughs> if you drink, you stink. I, I keep hearing it too, like uh, in an Adam Sandler style voice. Boozer, I can't even do his voice, but like boozers are losers, you know. That's funny, dude. And you know, you're showing you're showing her too that, um, you know, there's another way. That normalcy bias that you mentioned, but you know, it's just so normal just to drink or. You know, like you said earlier, come home and I, I worked a hard day. My that reward system, and uh, showing them young that they don't have to go down that path is so important. You know, and ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm very well aware, and I'm sure you are too, that like our kids are going to get faced with decisions on their own one day, whether they're teenagers or they get into their young, you know, young adults. But I hope that like in that you know, they're able to come back to the things that we've, sh we've showed them. Hopefully, you know, one day when your daughter, someone asks her to have a drink, she goes, <laughs> boozers are losers, man, get out of here. You know, or, <laughs> or if you drink, you know, she'll, she'll remember that stuff, man. And, and it's, a, it's really important, man. And that's a very uh, important, like driving factor, I think for a lot of people, their families, 
um, you know, you, you, you want, you want some, some freedom from that. So, um, good stuff, dude. Any other tips? Like what, well, what hasn't, what's been tough? Let's, let's, let's start there. Like what has been hard and then how did you get through, um, any moment or situation that was like challenging for you? Like, what did you do? Hardest parts have been, I've had a couple meetups with guys like legitimately my clients, there's, there's 15 grown men. We have an Airbnb down in Miami, this big old like mansion. And and we got <laughs> steaks on the grill and a pool oh, in the man. backyard. And then like there's tequila out and, and whiskey out and just all these things it's like, man, especially cause my year had just come to an end. Oh, so it wow. wasn't even like I was on in the 11th hour or anything. It was like, yeah. I did what I said I was going to do. I could just as easily drink. Um, what helped me in that situation is another guy is taking a dry year and I committed to him. I'm like, dude, in support of you, I'm not going to drink. So that way you're nice. not the only guy kind of in the environment, not drinking. But that's the big one. Being in environments when everyone, when liquor's flowing and everyone's just pounding alcohol, never easy. So the yeah. environment's number one. Yeah. Dude. Now those guys are all supportive. So that that's mm. helpful. If you're in a, uh, an environment where it's your high school buddies or your coworkers and they're like, dude, come on, just have a shot. Come on, drink. Yeah. Hey, he said he didn't want a shot, but get him a shot. Like good luck. Good luck staying sober <laughs> in that. So you got to get the hell out of that environment. Number one. That's yeah. I, I got to say that's the biggest one. Yeah, exiting sure. out, man. That exit plan is huge. We, we definitely encourage that one. Like, have a plan going into whatever situation you're you're facing. Um, and I love, dude, that you're pointing out that that kind of community service aspect too. Like, you had another dude there in, on your Florida trip who is not drinking too, and it's 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 super super important and like really powerful actually too when you can. Um, be of support to somebody else because when we're helping other people, we're helping ourselves. And sometimes we don't even realize it, you know? So having accountability and like that, um, you know, somebody you can call or lean on or whatever, man, that's, that's huge. So um, another, another great tip, man. Um, what, uh, what else is going down? What's the plan going ahead? You're, we're not, you, you mentioned you're kind of over it. You're still going and what's, what's going down ahead as you move on. Well, to go full circle, you asked about winning and I said, just being able to control yourself. Even we talked about Kennedy, she's five now, even fast forward. I mean, God, I don't even want to speak this into the universe. Whatever. At the very least, I could look in the mirror and say, dude, she didn't get it from me. <laughs> you know, like I did everything within my power to try to veer her off that road it'd be yeah. a very different look in the mirror if i had my own substance abuse issues that i never tackled and she grew up watching me drink every night and take an edible every night and sneak off to the garage and smoke weed every night and then mm. she found herself in that situation mm. well i would probably feel like a huge piece of shit and failure as a dad because i didn't yeah like the the trauma cycle lived on through her whereas now i, I can at least say I have a little bit of experience. She's my daughter. I'm going to do anything I can to help pull her out of out of this. But at the end of the day, this was her decisions. Yeah. I did everything that I could to try to get her off this path. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's that's good, man. And I I know we just got a couple of minutes before we got to hop off. But what about just real, real quick but being a dad? Like how how much has that been able to improve and grow? And oh, no, nah, I got you again. You kind of cut out there. Yeah, I know. I, I had a couple of a little drops from you too. The audio has been rough on this one uh, today, so I, you know, I don't know what what the, it may be just an internet connection. I'm I'm not really quite sure, but um, I was saying, um, just I know we got to hop off in just a couple minutes, but like, just about being a dad in general, like cutting alcohol out. Do you feel like that's really helped you just to be a better dad, a better husband, just just period, just in general? Dude, there was a time, I shouldn't admit this, especially on a huge podcast like you have, but this was during one of my, uh, everyone always prefaces, I wasn't a drunk, I, I wasn't an alcoholic, but there were a couple times I got blackout drunk. Mm. And there was one time that I, uh, I, I was just kind of like play fighting with Kennedy and her mom at the time, but I like threw her teddy bear at her. 
and it like mm. hit her in the face like mm. with the those those eyeballs on that teddy bear hard yeah and so yeah i haven't i mean no bullshit like that has happened since i haven't done anything yeah. that i thought was drunk funny you know frat party funny uh at the time but someone gets seriously like hurt from it i'm sure yeah. i did a bunch of dumb stuff and probably talked to her mom a certain way when i had a couple whiskeys in me that isn't productive for anyone so dude night yeah. night and day night and yeah. day oh that's good man well, back to how uh, how I said at the beginning, I've still never heard anyone say my habitual drinking habits have really improved my life. So there, there it is again. Um, yeah, good good stuff, man. I know I know we're, we're this is a short one today. Uh, I was a little late, man. So apologies about that. Um, I really appreciate chatting with you, man. I know we'll definitely be doing doing it again sometime. Uh, so two things before we wrap up. Um, number one, just any last minute piece of advice for any anyone out there listening who's just trying to kick alcohol. And then after that, where can folks find you? Where can folks reach out to you and, and get connected with you, Joel? I would say definitely keep following Shane. Shane, you've built a community. I know uh, I'm part of it, uh, of guys that are staying sober, holding each other accountable. So find an environment that's productive and conducive with your goals. That's mm -hmm. number one. Uh, you know, they say if you don't want a, a haircut, stay out of the barber shop. You can't be hanging out with the guys that are drinking every night and whatnot. You got to associate with guys who prioritize sobriety and, and self-development. So that's yeah. that's big. Make sure you have those guys. If not in person, then virtually. Ideally, you have both. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to connect with me, just add me on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most. Just Joel Staley Fitness. And uh, like I said, if you comment to me on there, I'll, I'll send over that that gift if you're curious about fasting or what have you. Yeah, perfect, man. Perfect. And once again, we'll put all those links in the show notes so they're very easy for you to find. Uh, Joel, it's been great to have you on the podcast again, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, brother. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope something spoke to you. Share the podcast with a friend. Connect us on Instagram at that sober guy podcast. Peace, love, and respect. Keep your blood clean. <laughs>